Crews are preparing to knock down decades of history along the Cumberland Avenue strip. That includes Stefano's Pizza, University Liquors, and the first ever Ruby Tuesday. The history of Cumberland Avenue, however, starts more than a century ago. 10 News reporter Grace King takes us on a trip back in time. Cumberland Avenue was always the main route to the west. In the early 1900s, Cumberland Avenue was residential. There are enormous mansions, the Woodruffs and the Cowans, and these people had these some of the biggest houses ever built in Knoxville. In the 20s, that quiet neighborhood began to change. You start seeing some commercial development on Cumberland Avenue, and it was mainly small restaurants and uh, they had a movie theater by 1928 on Cumberland called the Booth Theater. These attractions weren't for the University of Tennessee. This was for people, families who lived in the Fort Sanders area. As UT grew, Cumberland adapted. A lot of these businesses started to cater more and more to UT students, especially after World War II. Historian Jack Neely says Sam and Andy's on Cumberland and 18th served Knoxville's first slice of pizza. When something happened new, there's a good chance it showed up on Cumberland Avenue first. Um, it like, and like, like having the spaghetti shop about 15 years earlier. In the 50s and 60s, it was the place to be. There were all these things uh, going on, uh, especially appealing to kids, and music especially. This, is, this was Knoxville's night, nightclub section in the, in the post-war era. Neely says musicians like Louis Armstrong and Jimmy Buffett played along Cumberland. Later on, uh, you, you had lots of rock and roll clubs. UT constructed its first pedestrian bridge over the street in the 60s. But by the 70s, Cumberland Avenue became notorious. It's not difficult at all to walk down Cumberland, and there would be two or three individuals hit you up if you looked like you weren't a police officer. That would sell you drugs. A massive drug raid, called the biggest in Tennessee, made headlines in 1971. A lot of people were arrested. And uh, it was a, a, a big deal, and that's when people started calling it the Strip. Newspapers from 1974 detail concerns over streaking on the Strip. One says 5,000 people caused damage in the thousands. Another column says let's call it quits. The Strip's appearance stayed relatively unchanged from its early days. There were all these old 20s, 30s buildings that were built right up to the, to the sidewalk. Transformations of today began in the 90s. A lot of people have been coming to UT ball games for 40 years and they think, well, I'll go down and find the place I've always parked in. Well, that place may not be there because of construction. People began just cashing out and selling their property to various chains mostly. So they tear down these old buildings where these nightclubs had been and these little shops and things and put a parking lot in front of the building. Cumberland would never be the same. People say, gosh, we're, we've lost our Cumberland Avenue. It's nothing like it used to be. Um, but then uh, this idea of, of kind of rebuilding Cumberland Avenue to the sidewalk again, the old fashioned way, uh, came about. Well, coming up tonight at 11, we will pick up in the early 2000s as construction projects started on the road and then built up.